From the hardcore fans to the casuals, the art of war is the one thing that can bind us all together. Oh, he slapped him. And as Dana White puts it perfectly. Because it doesn't matter what color you are, what country you come from, or what language you speak, we're all human beings and fighting's in our DNA, man. We get it and we like it. The simple act of putting fist to chin is enough to engross anyone. And as the sport of mixed martial arts grows on a global stage, new fans are emerging and the stereotypes that come with them. This is every type of UFC fan explained. The Dagestani Disciples. In the cold, hard mountains of Dagestan, it's full of hardship in which wrestling becomes a way of life from birth, a pathway for something far greater. And the champions that arise from such a tough background are treated like gods upon their royal return. With the success in recent years of lightweight kings, Islam Mahachev and his predecessor, Khabib Nurmagomedov, comes a vitriolic fan base that will follow and defend them until the inevitable decline. Knocked down from Akashev. He's got to watch the arm triangle here. On his oh, oh, oh. steps. Extending to not just Dagestan, but the entire nation of Russia comes with it a social media reach near unmatched. Irish, only 6 million. Russian, 150 million. I want to fight with your chicken. Look no further than any comment section or thread in which any minor criticism or even compliment is taken with every bit of offense. The usual result is the words tap and McChicken being strung together, even if the original topic is completely unrelated. The McGregor Merchants. The passionate following of the Dagestanis can also be said for that of what I like to call the McGregor Merchants. It's fair to say that the notorious Conor McGregor's rise has him firmly established as the face of the fight game. The Irish are back! I run New York City! I'm a fucking pimp! Rocky Guilty Mick! And without me, this whole fucking ship sink! With his meteoric ascendancy came the wave of fans, once casuals, now firm hardcores. And it's not hard to understand why. His infectious personality and ability to soul read opponents made him hard to deny in his prime. But that era is now long gone, and the man that remains is a shell of his former self. I was boxing the bleeding head off him, kicking the bleeding leg off him. You was little do it to close the distance. This is not over. If we had to take this outside with him, it's all outside. We don't give a bollocks. As McGregor withers and declines, so does his fan base, with those still left the most hardcore of them all. Their frequent arguments stem from bold claims as the Irishman being the featherweight goat, despite zero title defenses, clinging onto the delusions that even at this stage of his career, there will be one final grand chapter left in his story. The harsh reality is that money has ended the once hungry contender, as much as his fans likely won't ever admit until he's dead and buried. The Patriots. The Patriots are those who, similar to the Irish faithful, will follow any champion of their country to the absolute bitter end. Proudly waving the red, white, and blue colors, to them, the only way is USA. All right, I'm the people's champ. I got a question for the people. Did you come out here to support these red coat Or did you come to be a part of the American Revolution? Colby Covington leaning into the MAGA hat gun-toting stereotype was a genius move in many ways, going from hated in his rise to at a point a man with one of the most vitriolic followings the sport had ever seen. Oh, the POTUS is calling me. Mr. President! You get that belt and you bring it in and I'll see you, man. We're rooting for you. Thank you so much, Mr. President. I'm going to bring you the new belt to the Oval Office soon after you win you, November 3rd by a landslide. You. But with his self-destruction against Leon Edwards making his fan base crumble beneath him, the Patriots needed a new man to support. They would find him, of course, with Sean Strickland. I'm an American, red, white, and blue, you know, freedom, Patriot Act, all that. But, you know, like, something happened with America. We're like, we went from, like, smoking cigarettes, riding horses, and, like, working on cars to a bunch of f***ing pussies. His unexpected rise to middleweight champion as a huge underdog had him coined by the American faithful as the people's champ. With his raw authenticity, for better or worse, cultivating a passionate fan base, one of which, of course, he would lean into. Let me tell you, you guys are f***ing awesome, and I cannot wait to see this man to f***ing go to war for you f***ing guys. We're going to be dick to dick, nipple to nipple in that f***ing range, f***ing fighting, bro. I hope after we're done, we put on a show for you f***ing guys. Without delving too hard into the politics Sean and his fan base are heavily engrossed in, the heated debates surrounding them are now synonymous with the many patriots of the fight game. The Diaz diehards. 
The Diaz diehards, the wannabe gangsters, the 209 enthusiasts. They ride out for no man or woman except the two brothers with that four-letter last name. Similar to that of the McGregor fans, they remain clinging on to past glories and delusions, convinced that both brothers can still hang at the top level. Whilst the younger Nate's longevity is certainly admirable, the amount of damage he has taken throughout his tenure as a fighter is enough for three lifetimes, and possibly an explanation for why even he thinks he can beat anyone on any given day, even at this stage of his career. Who the f else did I try to fight? Dustin Poirier. Poirier, Chandler, the best of the best, whoever you could get, Adesanya, uh, Niganu. I'm for real in a fight game. I felt I'm the best fighter to ever be in the UFC ever. It's a sentiment that the fan base feeds into, with the phrase, it was a street fight, Nate wins, being all too common, even after he takes a life-changing beatdown. His fifth round heroics against now welterweight king Leon Edwards won't be forgotten. Oh, 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 he's hurt him. The double-edged sword is that even to this day, the Diaz diehards will be in every comment section, stating how he's the rightful ruler of the throne. The English fans. With the long-standing assumption in MMA that the fighting English cannot wrestle, it's fairly understandable that the fellow countrymen supporting them in 2024 have a big chip on their shoulder. Times have changed. With now three total UFC champions hailing from the UK, the number of fans is only growing further. As the UFC grew into its golden age, so did the European fan base. with England one small but extremely loud piece of that puzzle. Characterized fairly or not, the stereotypical image of a loudmouth, beer-chugging Brexiteer is a perception shared by most other countries. Scousers Darren Till and Paddy Pimblett were able to channel that energy into cracking the American fan base with their brash personas. I'm a Scouser. We don't get knocked out. Hey, I take that all day. Whilst fighters such as Tom Aspinall, Leon Edwards and Arnold Allen have helped usher in an era of honour and respect in a game of showmen and entertainers. Staying up until 7am is par for the course for every pay-per-view due to time zones, so any card on at a reasonable time feels like a blessing from the MMA gods themselves. With all that being said, just like the Dagestani disciples and the McGregor merchants before them, the English faithful will always bring it come fight night. The Meatheads. Even with the crazy takes some of the previous fans will no doubt mention, the meatheads are always the most deluded of them all. Typically juiced to the gills, you'll find them living in the gym most days, and when they do come out to watch the next big pay-per-view, you'll always hear the same comment that they could beat up any MMA fighter in a street fight simply by seeing red. You think you beat me in a street fight? Huh? You think you beat me in a street fight? You in a street fight? Yeah. <laughs> You're a podcaster, brother. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Who wins a street fight, me or you? I kill you. <laughs> That's I'm opening your guts and fucking <laughs> playing with them. To them, cardio is simply a made-up concept, and the answer to just about every problem is by flexing their biceps. The recency bias guy. These are the fans that on a dime will switch their opinions immediately and be the first one to call a trained professional athlete washed the moment they suffer a loss in the cage. Yes, it's no secret that time comes for us all, and fighters do decline, sometimes rapidly. The flip-flop nature of the recency bias fan is genuinely mind-numbing. The arc of one now Jermaine Sterling comes to mind. Despite three title defenses against Piotr Jan, TJ Dillashaw and Henry Cejudo, some have come out of the woodwork to suggest he is washed after losing his belt to the no doubt credible Sean O'Malley. Sterling on it! On the other end of that spectrum, the same fans will be the first to jump the gun on calling a newly crowned champion the next GOAT. Look no further than Taporia's recent claim of the featherweight throne over Alexander Volkanovsky. Whilst El Matador may well have a lengthy reign yet at just 27 years of age, to call it this early is the boldest of predictions to make. The Boxing Guy The Boxing Guy will always be the first to remind you of the sweet science every time a UFC event is on rambling about the golden age of a now decaying sport. They will also feed into the strange delusions that a boxer could beat up any MMA fighters, blissfully unaware to how that has played out in the past on a professional stage. Uh, James Tony. He took a fight in the UFC. He did? Yeah, yeah. He's the only real world champion boxer that ever fought in mixed martial arts in the UFC. And wow. uh, Randy Couture ankle picked him took him down, strangled him. It was easy. Yeah. Frequently found in the corners of the internet defending the sport they love. Any opportunity to put down mixed martial arts, they will absolutely take. The Chronic Gambler. This one is pretty self-explanatory. The Hardcores. The Hardcores are not necessarily vets of the game, but ones that have caught the UFC bug to such a level that they will without fail tune into every event possible. 
Star-sided pay-per-views to, yes, even the Holly Holm main events. But the real hardcores are the ones who have ascended beyond. Burn out on the sport so much that just like the fellow casual they would once mock, they only tune in to the biggest cars of the month. And finally, the casuals. A term long overused since the UFC's inception. But I think it's mostly characterized by the one guy or girl watching the latest pay-per-view with you for the first time. Usual responses to the action include, why don't they just stand them up? Along with a homosexual connotation every time the fight hits the mat. Now I'm sure there's more I missed, so if you have any suggestions, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below. And thank you for watching.